Hey YouTubers, welcome back. My name is Andrea, and if you're new to my channel, welcome to my channel, Andrea Renee Abroad, where I talk about Peace Corps, travel, and working abroad. I'm a former Peace Corps volunteer who served in Nicaragua from August of 2016 to April of 2018. I'm now currently living and working in Melbourne, Australia as an au pair, so if you are wanting to know more about that, then you'll have to check out my channel. In today's video, I'm going to be focusing in on a Peace Corps topic. This video is 100% about my experience with food during Peace Corps. Now, I think that's a topic that a lot of people think about before they go to Peace Corps. They're wondering, what am I gonna eat? What will I have access to? Will I be able to eat the things that I ate when I was in the United States? What will it be like? I want to begin this video by talking about the fact that having a diet is a privilege. Nicaragua is the second poorest country in the Western Hemisphere. So everything that is available to you food-wise is generally from the country itself. The majority of the population has a very small income, so they really can only afford to buy the crops and food products that come from their country. Imported foods are going to be a lot more expensive, so generally imported foods are not part of the traditional cuisine. Because you are going to be living at the level of the locals during your service, you will most likely be eating the same foods that your fellow host country nationals are consuming, which will most likely be the crops that are grown in that country and the animals that are harvested for food, so meat and dairy in that country. Again, you will be not very likely to eat imported foods during your service. The other thing to consider is that you will be limited by your Peace Corps allowance. Now, I have already made a video about how much money you make during Peace Corps, so I'll go ahead and link that above. In Peace Corps Nicaragua, I made about $250 a month, which meant that I had about $25 a week to cover all of my weekly expenses, which included both transportation and gross Groceries. So I was limited to a very small amount of money in order to do my grocery shopping. Looking at my service overall, during my pre-service training, and I've made a video about what pre-service training is, I'll also link that above if you want to know what that is. During pre-service training, I was fed by my host family. I did not do any food purchasing of my own other than the occasional coffee at the local cafe. But during my service, I did live in a casita, which is a little house. It was up to me to make my own meals during my service. Now, that is not the case for a lot of Peace Corps volunteers, including Peace Corps volunteers in Nicaragua. Many volunteers will live with a host family during their service and eat all of their meals with their host family, or at least be given food from their host family's kitchen. So my circumstances were pretty unique in the fact that I was able to cook my own meals and I had my own kitchen. If you are a prospective volunteer, know that this may or may not be the case for you. You might be eating what your host family is eating or you might be cooking your own meals. Maybe some of you are thinking, oh, it sounds so much better to cook my own meals. Now remember, you're not in an American environment anymore. So if you're cooking your own meals, that means you are shopping for food the same way the locals do, which is a whole skill set that you'll have to learn. So to give context to my own experience with food during Peace Corps, I want to give a little bit of background on my own relationship with food prior and during Peace Corps. Prior to Peace Corps, I had absolutely no dietary restrictions. I pretty much ate it all, and I would say that my diet was very heavily in the grain and dairy area. I really honestly didn't know a whole lot about nutrition. Of course I knew, you know, the basics that I should be eating fruits and vegetables, but I wasn't really aware of what certain foods were doing to my body when I put them into my body. I often experienced a lot of pain in the evenings and night times at the end of the day, and I didn't really give it much thought. I would often go to bed with an upset stomach. I'm not honestly sure how I went so many years to bed with an upset stomach and didn't bother to do more research on it. Pretty much my entire life I had been a very active person. I was raised doing ballet. During college I ran. I've always been a very athletic and active 
active person. It really wasn't until my early 20s, which was right when I was about to depart for Peace Corps, that I started to notice that the nutritional and food choices that I was making were starting to affect my body physically. But I didn't, again, give it much thought, although I was getting frustrated because I was thinking to myself, how could I be exercising as much as I am and then not seeing the results physically? So when I departed for Peace Corps, I already departed with a few different dietary restrictions in mind that I would make for myself. I wasn't very well traveled prior to Peace Corps at all, but I had been to Guatemala. And every time I went to Guatemala, I always had a really big issue with the dairy there. And I also even was sensitive to dairy in other regions of the United States. I already made the decision when I went to Peace Corps that I would not be consuming any of the dairy in Nicaragua because just based on prior experience, I knew that my body was sensitive to dairy that was not from Oregon. When I went to go live with my host family in Mazatepe, Masaya, for pre-service training, I was introduced to the traditional Nicaraguan cuisine. I did tell my host mom that I really didn't want to be eating any dairy, but she tried to talk me into the fact that the milk products were not pasteurized and how that would somehow perhaps make it easier for me to digest those products. She talked to me into that a little bit, but I still kind of avoided cheeses for the most part, but occasionally she talked me into drinking a chocolate milk that she had made from actual cacao that she had purchased in the market. So it was kind of hard for me to to say no in many circumstances. For breakfast, she would generally give me bread, eggs, and then coffee. And the coffee actually in Masatepe Masaya was instant coffee, and she would add a whole bunch of powdered creamer and sugar to make it taste better because the instant coffee by itself did not taste very good. Usually in my eggs, she would chop up some tomatoes and onions in it, so it, it did taste good to me. And on occasion, she would switch things up and make me like an egg McMuffin, you could say, but it was really just like a slice of ham in there and then this like sandwich spread that was orange in color. To this day, I don't really know what that orange spread was, but that was kind of a traditional breakfast for me. For lunch, we would generally have rice, beans, salad, and some kind of meat. Lunch was always the biggest meal of the day, but my host mom started to notice that I wasn't really eating much of the meat. I would kind of leave part of the meat on my plate because it was only half cooked by my American standards of cooked meat. And so they, and I, I was always kind of worried that I would get sick if I would eat the meat. So I tend to kind of eat just part of it and kind of pick at it. For dinner, my host mom would combine the leftovers of rice and beans from lunch to make what is called gallo pinto, which is really, really delicious. And then she would fry me two eggs and then give me a tortilla or two to go with it. Over the course of training, I gained 15 pounds. It was quite a significant amount. I definitely noticed that I wasn't able to fit into a lot of my clothing that I had brought to Peace Corps. And I'm only 5'3", so I'm not that tall of a person. Honestly, I was feeling disgusting physically by the end of pre-service training. Then I left Mazatepe Masaya and went to my city of service, Esteli, Nicaragua, where I had my very own bedroom and my host mom in Esteli told me that I was to buy my own kitchen setup and then cook for myself. That was honestly one of the most empowering experiences I think I had as a Peace Corps volunteer was going into the community very early into my service and finding all the things that I needed in order to make my own kitchen. Now, I already did a house tour of my casita in Esteli where I explained the process of building my kitchen up together. So if you're interested in finding out more about how I made my kitchen during Peace Corps, I'll go ahead and link that up. When I got to Esteli, Nicaragua, I had obviously already decided that I wasn't going to eat any more dairy. I had really not eaten that much dairy during pre-service training, but then when I got to Esteli, I was just like, no way. I can't eat dairy anymore. And I was also very aware of the fact that I had gained a lot of weight during pre-service training. And then a few months into my service, I got a bacterial infection and I got extremely sick, probably the most sick to my stomach that I've ever been in my entire life. I had horrible stomach pains. It was actually putting pressure on my spine so I couldn't stand up straight. It was just immensely painful. Luckily there are Peace Corps medical officers. So I was on the phone with the Peace
peace corps or medical officer and she was able to give me a prescription that luckily my site mates were able to pick up for me and bring to my house bless them they were so kind to do that and they also brought me gatorade which was so sweet of them but i was just incredibly sick what had happened was the day before i had eaten a pork naka tamal a naka tamal is a nicaragua tamale sometimes they're made from chicken sometimes they're made from pork but my host mom and my host family in Estelif, that was how they made a living was they made naka tamales and so of course you know occasionally i would be like what am i going to eat for dinner i think i'll just support you know, their little small business and buy a nakatamal from them. But I got so sick and I had heard rumors that I needed to be careful with pork just because it's a type of meat that you are very likely to get sick from. So I knew that I needed to be careful. About that time in my life, early in my service, I actually started to become aware of the vegan movement, which I really had never done much research on. It really was the health benefits of a vegan lifestyle that eventually turned me to become 100% vegan. After I got that bacterial infection, that was when I slowly started to become vegan. This just happened to occur during my Peace Corps experience. Your relationship with food during Peace Corps might you know, be similar or different from mine. I know it sounds kind of cliche that I turned vegan during Peace Corps, but that's just what happened. I was shopping and cooking for myself and we were limited to a very small amount of money. So really cutting out all the animal products from my diet did financially benefit me. So I have, of course, had already eliminated dairy from my diet, then I eliminated meat, followed by eggs, and then finally followed by honey. And that was just kind of the progression of it. Also, because I was so limited, financially during my service I did eventually stop buying sugar and oil only started buying sunflower seed oil just to make popcorn that was like my one treat and I wasn't able to make popcorn without oil. Again, I, I feel like it was kind of, you know, a mix of all the information coming in from the vegan community about the health benefits, partnered with the bacterial infection that I had, and then also the financial benefits of being plant-based during my service. So all those things came together. Now, I wanna get back to the first point that I made during this video, that having a diet is a privilege. Having the ability to choose what you want to eat is a privilege because not everyone in the world is able to do this or afford this. Many people in the world just have to eat what's in front of them and what's available to them because if they don't, they will starve. They don't have an option. Basically what I decided was in my casita, I would always be vegan because since I had become vegan for the health benefits of being vegan, I figured that if I had a teeny bit of animal products here and there when I was somebody's guest in the community, that it wouldn't be too big of a deal. But I did still always avoid dairy. That was really easy to do. Just, you know, there, there are Nicaraguans who can't eat dairy either. So I would just say, me hace daño, no puedo comer lactosa. And they would understand pretty much immediately. Um, if not even just relate to me and say that they also could not eat lactose. So let's talk about grocery shopping during Peace Corps because it is not at all like it was in the United States. The way that I approached my grocery shopping in Nicaragua was I would block off a chunk of time on Monday mornings to do my grocery shopping because I didn't work on Mondays, but I also couldn't do grocery shopping on Sundays because a lot of the shops would be closed and there would be less selection. I would pretty much start by looking on Pinterest and looking up different basic recipes that I thought I could make that had ingredients that were available to me. I would first go to the Super Walmart, basically, the Walmart Superstore, which was called Maxi Pali. It is owned by Walmart. And I would get some of the ingredients there that I knew I couldn't find at the market. After I got all of those ingredients, in addition to a few snacks, one of my favorite snacks during Peace Corps was refried beans with tortilla chips. And then I would go over to the Mercado, the market, the open air market, and buy all of my produce. There I would get all my vegetables, I would get all my fruit, I would also buy my grains at the market because it was cheaper to buy your basic grains, rice, beans, and popcorn at the open air market. I would be carrying all my, my bags with me, but it was always a really good grocery shopping experience. And usually when I got home, I did have Tupperware at my house that I had 
actually brought from the United States, but you can probably, I would have been able to buy Tupperware there. I just didn't know that. So I brought my own Tupperware. Generally for the rest of Monday, I would be doing food prep. So I would, you know, chop up all the fruit. Like if I bought any melon, so, you know, I'd chop up the papaya, chop up the pineapple, whatever kind of melon it was that I had and just have it there available for me to eat when I got hungry. I would also usually prep some sort of meal for myself. As I mentioned before, I often looked up recipes on Pinterest prior to going grocery shopping. But one traditional Nicaraguan dish that I did make for myself all the time was sopita de frijol, which is just bean soup. I would cook the beans from scratch. So that would require me soaking the beans overnight and then cooking the next day. And then using the bean broth, you would add vegetables. I also took to adding barley so that I could get a few extra calories in there. Sometimes if I had some tortillas that were about to go bad, then I would throw all the tortillas in there in small pieces just to add some calories again. I didn't go hungry during Peace Corps, but I would also say that I never overate during Peace Corps either, just because financially it wasn't an option to overeat. But yeah, generally, you know, I would have popcorn in the evenings because that was an easy and affordable snack that I could make for myself. But that's pretty much what it looks like and looked like in my casita. Outside of my casita, you know, sometimes I would go to a baby shower or a birthday or some sort of celebration or there'd be an event at the school. A lot of times I could not get out of eating meat. I could always get out of eating dairy just because Nicaraguan cuisine uses cheese as an additive. It's never really cooked into anything. It's always added on top later. So that was really easy to always get out of eating that. At birthday parties, for example, if it was with my host family, a lot of times what I would do was kind of leave my chicken or whatever kind of meat it was on my plate. And then when I saw my 13 year old host nephew, I would be like, Hey, do you want my chicken? And usually he would say yes. Cause he was, you know, a 13 year old boy. And yes, of course he would want to eat more. He was always hungry. I would just give it to him. And it was just kind of, you know, something between the two of us. He always knew that I was going to give him my leftover chicken. And we made sure that my host mom and host sister didn't see what I was doing. So that's kind of how I got out of that. So that's kind of a tip that I guess you could take away. And then also, you know, sometimes I would go out to eat with my site mates and they of course knew that I had a preference of a plant-based diet and it was really easy generally to find vegan options at the various restaurants. I would say overall it was very easy to be vegan during Peace Corps Nicaragua. You know, many of you are going to different regions of the world where, you know, maybe they use bone broth or maybe they use dairy that is baked or cooked into the different dishes. I would say, you know, if you're going to Peace Corps somewhere in Latin America, it probably will be a little bit easier to be vegan than if you're going to somewhere in Eastern Europe or Asia where a lot of the meat products are more cooked into the meal themselves. I think just to close off this video, I'm gonna go back again to what I said before. Just remember that having dietary preferences is a privilege and that you are a guest in your country. So to turn down somebody's food that they are offering to you is to turn down their hospitality. So do keep that in mind. You don't want to start off your service on the wrong foot by declining food and then risking your relationship in the community because food is such an important part of culture. That's it for this video. I hope this gave you a little bit of an idea of what to expect during your Peace Corps service. I just hope that whatever you do, that you approach your service with an open mind and that you find your way to respectfully decline or accept food as you progress in your service, depending on whether or not you have dietary preferences or not. I realize that there's so many more things that I could talk about in this video. I feel like food is a very big topic. So if you have any questions for me, please be sure to comment below. I'd be more than happy to answer any questions you might have about food during Peace Corps. One thing that I will add just as a postscript here at the end is that the two times that I went home during Peace Corps, I did stock up on food from the US and bring it back to Nicaragua with me. So if you want to do that at the beginning of your service, then by all means do that. I hope this video was helpful. Be sure to follow me on Instagram, Facebook, and check out my blog on WordPress if you haven't already. And you, if you haven't subscribed to this channel, I would love for you to subscribe. More videos about Peace Corps and being an au pair coming up soon.